there goes my screen. Oh, there goes your screen. Yay! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> For those who are new to this channel, my name is Chester C. I'm a photographer based out in Sydney who takes photos like these. In this video, I'll talk about eight tips on how to capture seascape flow photos. Seascapes carry a degree of risk because on one hand, you're protecting your gear against all the elements of the waves crashing against you at the same time as you getting soaked from the waist up. And on the other hand, you're capturing the most epic dramatic shots. Before I get into the tips, let's jump into a sunrise mission that I did with a friend of mine at a very well-known flow photography spot in the northern beaches of Sydney. This will be a point of view style vlog where you can hopefully be immersed into what it's like to capture a seascape photo at sunrise with the waves crashing against you and with all these different elements going on at the same time. Plus, it's also a way for me to concentrate because there's so many things to think about. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So setting up the uh, Nissi filters right now because there's actually no place for me to set up up there because it's all wet. So I'm just putting on the V5 holder, the circular polarizer just went on. It's got the uh, soft grade ND filter on right now. So I'm going to slip that on. Really light one, but easy going. I don't need any other ND filters because I want to get the uh, flow shot. Don't need uh, a super long exposure. Got my, my Suri tripod here right now. Should be sturdy. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Just setting up the tripod right now. Hopefully it's sturdy. It's about to get flow. Need to go to F8. So get as much in as possible. And then down to about anywhere between 0.6 to a third of a second. So that's the best place for flow. And then, okay, it's a little bit dark, so might drop the uh, about a third, six, somewhere like that. I'm gonna experiment. I'm gonna drop it down to about f5. So, if we gotta get flow, I need to compensate for the aperture. All right, I think I am all good. I'm gonna head out there. Like Josh is right now, and then I'm gonna set it to two seconds. Fire. First shot. Oh, nice flow. Okay, now I need to position my camera properly because it's a little bit weird. All right. Just composing the shot. Yeah, this is a good leading line here right now. Currently at a high tide. One to two foot swell, so perfect conditions for this spot that we wanted to capture for a long time. All right, two second time. You know what I should have done? Put my uh, wireless thing on it so I can just click and click and click rather than two seconds. But it shows that you can still cope without it. But man, the water is really warm. Still, <laughs> as the water escapes, it's really nice as well. Not just coming in. I think in these situations, you just have to just spray and pray. Hope for the best. You don't know what you're gonna get. Oh. <laughs> I can't, <t> <laughs> I can't see anything there. What kind of a shot was that? <laughs> High tide is certainly a good time to capture this spot. Sun's come through, so I'm gonna have to up the aperture a little bit to maintain that 0.3 of a second to get the flow. So I'm gonna have to make some sacrifices with the aperture, but it's all right. All right, I think the sun's come through now. So I think we're wrapping up towards the end of the shot. The color's gone. The flow is really juicy though. Man, you really need to hold tight because there's so much vibration through there. I am drenched. <laughs> I'm actually drenched all the way up to my, uh, to here. Bro. Yeah, but <laughs> we just finished up at the gully, the Narrabeen gully. How do you think you went? Uh, pretty good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
got some, got some nice shots. Yeah. Literally spraying and praying for the shot. Hope to get the shot. Getting absolutely drenched on the way. So. Yeah. <laughs> spraying and praying and being sprayed on. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this vlog has given you some insight as to what it's like to shoot a seascape photo. So without further ado, let's get to the 8 tips. Number 1. Dress for the occasion. Don't be like me and wear flip flops and thongs because you are absolutely prone to slip over, especially if you step on the slippery green moss that's on the rocks. Not to mention any rogue wave that could take you out. What I highly recommend is wearing rock shoes, which is what my friend Josh is wearing that morning when we went out shooting. They have the ability to have a firm grip on the rocks and moss, and therefore you won't be prone to slipping over. Number two, get a waterproof and sturdy tripod. I use a Surui tripod, which is waterproof and absolutely sturdy and can stand against all sorts of elements like wind and rogue waves. Having a sturdy tripod is a must, especially when waves are crashing against you. Number three, use a camera that can shoot manual. Capturing seascape flow shots require you to shoot long exposures, and long exposure means that you need to have control over your shutter speed manually. So ensure that your camera can shoot manual. So in my case, when it comes to capturing the seascape flow shots, I ensure that my shutter speed is somewhere between 0.3 to 0.6 of a second to get the optimum looking flow photo. And when it comes to aperture, set it to f8, which is the standard landscape aperture that most people use. But again, you can adjust it depending on the light conditions and keep your ISO to 100 so that there is no noise in the shot. Like I said before, it really depends on the lighting conditions of the day. So I highly recommend you practicing and playing around with it just like what I did in the vlog itself. Number four, use filters. For me personally, I use Nissi filters, which are a great way of balancing the exposure between the sky and the foreground. And it's a great way to also lower the amount of light that's coming into your lens so that you can get them juicy long exposures. Number five, research tide. If you want juicy water flow shots, you need to make sure that your tide is correct. Other beaches and other locations might only require low tide to get that flow. Other locations require low to mid tide because when it's high tide, it's not even accessible. So it really depends on the location that you shoot at and I recommend researching the spot beforehand so that you don't get into trouble or even get trapped. Number six, look for composition. As with any other type of photography, composition matters. You need to look for rocks or any leading line formations on the ground to form that leading line towards the subject matter. Make sure you frame your photo towards one third into the frame as with any other one third rule that you might have heard about. And also you can use water flow as a means of a leading line as well because they cause a leading line in the shot. So as you saw in my vlog, you can see how I lined my shots to compose with the one third rule and making sure that your eye is drawn into the leading line towards the subject matter. And in my case, it was the bang of sunrise in the background. Number seven, spray and pray. Every wave is different. And as I said earlier, you never know what kind of flow shots will be crashing against the rocks. Every shot that you take will have a different formation. And the best thing to do is to shoot as much as possible and then look through it afterwards to find the best possible flow. For me personally, I like the kind of flow shots that have a dramatic kind of look to it where there's a huge amount of water that's rushing against it and crashing against the rocks. Number eight, use a two second timer or a remote shutter capture. When it comes to capturing long exposure shots, even the smallest of movement in the camera or tripod can cause your image to be blurry. Even as simple as clicking the shutter button itself can cause enough of a movement to cause that micro shake and therefore your image is gone. So what I recommend is either getting a remote shutter tool where you remotely capture it with the click of a button to eliminate any physical contact with the camera or tripod, or if like me, when I forgot it, use a two second timer. So set your camera to two seconds to fire. So when you push the shutter button, move your hands out of the way, don't touch your tripod or camera and let it fire. And that is a really good way to ensure that your images are as steady and as sharp as possible. 
I hope you've learned something new today. I hope that this has been really useful information in helping you take your seascape photos to another level. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe because that will help me out a ton. With all that is said and done, I'll catch you in the next one. Where'd you go? Oh, that looks great. Just from that little crack. Oh, there goes your screen. Yay! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> That's why... <laughs> That's Sony for you. <laughs> Maybe it's all that salt. Maybe we need to get something more sturdy like a cannon. <laughs>